Carnival Cruise Line has 23 ships. Some of these are brand new and beautiful, and some of them have been around since the 90s, and they're looking a little bit rusty around the edges. Now, there's a big price difference when it comes to Carnival Cruises. Some of them are really, really cheap, and some of them actually quite expensive. So, do you get what you pay for? Are some ships really that much better than others? I wanted to find out. Now, I haven't been on every single Carnival ship, and even if I had, that would be just one person's opinion. So what I did was I went online and I looked up all of the reviews from TripAdvisor, CruiseLine.com, and Cruise Critic for every ship. I put them all together in a big spreadsheet and ordered the Carnival ships from best to worst by reviews. So let's run through them all and find out which Carnival ships people loved and which ones they didn't like so much. Number one in the list of the best carnival ships is Carnival Celebration. Who would have guessed it? The newest carnival ship is also the best, according to reviews. Which is good, right? Because if you're paying a premium to sail on the newest ship, you want it to be good. And Carnival Celebration is good. Now, I was lucky enough to spend the day on board Carnival Celebration in Southampton just before the maiden voyage and I got a good look around the ship and I must say this ship is amazing. The party atmosphere is fantastic, there's so many different places to eat and drink, everything is new and shiny and lovely and there's loads of good entertainment. It's a really good ship. Not all the reviews were positive though, um, a few people had some complaints about having to wait a little bit longer for food or for drinks and there were a few people who said that the cruise was just too busy, the ship was too big, and they didn't like it. But really, that's probably on them, isn't it? If you don't like big, busy cruises, then you don't have to choose a ship that big. And Carnival Celebration is big. There are much smaller Carnival ships, if that's your thing. Now, at number two, we have Carnival Panorama. Carnival Panorama was launched in 2019, so she is one of the newest ships, but she's not quite as big as Carnival Celebration. You're looking at maybe 5,000 guests instead of the 6,500 that Celebration can accommodate. Carnival Pomerana. <laughs> Carnival Panorama does great on reviews because this is the kind of ship that everyone loves. There's lots for kids to do and there's lots of places for older people to just chill and relax as well. People love the entertainment on this ship, they've praised all the good food options. And people also really like the itineraries which sail around the Mexican Riviera. The service on Carnival ships is generally pretty good, and the same is definitely true of Carnival Panorama. The only real negative that people said about this ship is that, again, they found it a little bit too busy with too much going on on deck. But hey, maybe those people aren't Carnival cruisers, you know? There's a cruise line for everyone. And uh, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with the ship. If you don't enjoy it, it might just not be the ship for you. Number three is Mardi Gras. And we all love Mardi Gras. She's the sister ship to Carnival Celebration. Before Mardi Gras, if somebody said that you could have a roller coaster on a cruise ship, you probably would have laughed at them. But Mardi Gras proved that that was indeed possible. But it's not just a roller coaster. There's also some incredible entertainment venues and lots of great food options as well. A few of the complaints that people had about Mardi Gras were around the speciality dining. Maybe they weren't um, up to the standard that they were perhaps expecting. That could be a temporary problem though, so I definitely recommend that you check it out and see for yourself. Next up, we have Carnival Breeze. Now, Carnival Breeze is slightly older. She was launched in 2012, so it's fantastic that um, she's fourth in this list of best ships by reviews. Carnival Breeze is also a little bit smaller, still definitely not small, don't get me wrong, um, but she can accommodate about 3,700 guests, so quite a bit smaller than some of the newest ships. People praised the crew members on Carnival Breeze so much. They said that they're all lovely and friendly and welcoming, and another thing that people also love is the water slides. If you're looking for a great value cruise, Carnival Breeze is probably one of the best. This ship has excellent reviews, but the cruises can be a little bit cheaper because it's a slightly older ship. There's a really fun party atmosphere on board and most people love it, although some people do say it gets a little bit rowdy and noisy at times. Next up, we've got Carnival Dream, which is another great option. Just like Carnival Breeze, this is a Dream class ship, so those two are virtually identical although Dream was built first in 2009. Now, from reading the reviews, people have said that the atmosphere is quite relaxed on this ship, and that's something that they like. It could possibly be to do with the people on board or the itineraries, 
Uh, this ship sails out of Texas and goes to Central America and the Caribbean. Next up, we have Carnival Pride, which is a spirit class ship all the way from 2002. So this ship is over 20 years old now, but creators say that it has been very well looked after and it got great reviews. Carnival Pride is one of the smallest ships in the fleet as well. So there's 12 decks and around 2,700 guests. So it's around half the size of the newest ship. Now the decor of the ship, I like it. It's kind of antique it's kind of 90s. You might say it looks dated, I don't know. It gets mixed reviews, but I think it's pretty cool. And, and ships from the 90s don't put me off. Older ships do have a few design quirks and this ship certainly does. Um, it's quite hard to find your way around sometimes and get yourself to where you need to be on the ship. Um, but the atmosphere on board is generally pretty good and people love it. Next up is Carnival Glory, which is a mid-sized ship from 2003. So this one's 20 years old as well. Um, people have commented a little bit to say that Carnival Glory feels a little bit like she's showing her age. I suppose a lot of the time it depends when the ship was last painted. Cruise ships do get rusty really quickly and I know Carnival ships have a bit of a reputation for being rusty. Most of the time they're not, it just kind of depends on the weather. But despite that, Carnival Glory still ranks pretty highly in this list, which is a testament to how happy people are with the service. People really love the Waterworks water park on this ship and it's really popular with families so if you've got kids this is one to consider. Next up is a sister ship to Carnival Glory and that's Carnival Valor. Carnival Valor sails out of New Orleans offering shorter itineraties to the Caribbean. On board you can expect a great quality of service and the food gets really good reviews as well. One thing that people mention is that the kids club is right next to the spa and the serenity area so that could possibly be an issue for people who hate kids but for most of us I'm sure it'll be fine. Next up we've got Carnival Miracle. Now this ship is from 2004 and she apparently has one of the best space to guest ratios which means that she's more spacious than all the other ships, just slightly. I checked that because that's something that people mention a lot, they say that this ship doesn't feel too crowded. This ship sails from the west coast so the itineraries might not be as exciting as some others but there is lots to do on the ship and people really praise the food and the entertainment. At number 10 we've got Carnival Horizon. Now she is one of the newer ships launched in 2018 She's a sister ship to Carnival Panorama, which scored really highly with reviews. So you might be surprised that Carnival Horizon is a little bit lower um, at number 10 out of 26. And I think that's a sign that newer and bigger doesn't always mean better. This ship's bold, colourful, modern, but some people have said that it's a little bit soulless and maybe that the service isn't as good as what they might have been used to on other ships. And service is something that's really important. It can make or break your cruise. So I'm not saying avoid this ship. I'm just saying bigger and newer isn't always better. Next up, we've got Carnival Vista, which was launched just before Carnival Horizon. And they are very similar ship, both in terms of what you'll get on board and also the standards, according to these reviews. Carnival Vista was the first ship to introduce some really cool features on board, like the IMAX cinema and the Skyride, and the first ship to have Dr. Seuss on board. But the reviews are quite mixed. Clearly, there's a lot to do on the ship. But again, it's the service that some people weren't quite so happy with, which is a real shame. Next up, we've got Carnival Liberty. Now this is a medium sized ship, medium aged and medium in terms of where it comes on this list of best to worst ship. The ship is good value though because the cruises are pretty cheap. Um, it sails out of Orlando so the itineraries are good as well and although it doesn't have all of the bells and whistles of the newer ships there's still lots of promise to do on board. Now there's no roller coaster, there's no fancy sky ride but instead you get poolside movies, karaoke nights, comedy, theatre. If you just want a cheap break and a good time with your family, this is a good ship to choose. Next up we've got Carnival Freedom. This ship is from 2007, but it was the latest ship to receive Carnival's new fun ship upgrades. That means it's got new stuff on board, like a revamped water park, the Red Frog Pub and the Blue Iguana Cantina. <laughs> now the thing with Carnival Freedom is it can feel like a bit of a mishmash because it, some of it is quite old and then it's got these newer bits added on but generally you know the reviews are okay and people quite like it. The service is good, the food is alright, it's a good all-rounder. Next up is Carnival Conquest from 2002. This is another fun ship that's popular with families and um, it's a great way to let your hair down. Some people have said that there's not as much to do for teenagers and they might possibly get a little dare I say it, bored. I mean, I don't know how you could get bored on a carnival cruise, but 
this isn't my review but it's not too rowdy it's not too loud and it's a good cruise to choose if you just want to chill out for a few days next up is carnival spirit from 2001 now this is a good ship to choose if you're more bothered about the itineraries than the ship itself because there are some really good ones you can go to australia Alaska and Central America depending on which time of year you cruise. Some parts of the ship do look a little bit dated but then it is an older ship. It's got a really good laid-back vibe though that fits in with the Australian clientele on board and people rave about the service too. Next up is Carnival Magic from 2011. Now this ship was a real pioneer and it was the first ship to have some of the features like the Red Frog pub and the high ropes course oh and the hasbro game show as well this ship was really really popular when it was first launched and it still is but the reviews are not quite as good as some of the other ones maybe people really liked it originally and now it's a little bit older and not as good as they expected i don't know it's not bad though next up we've got carnival legend from 2002 now again it's an older ship some of the decor is so dated that it looks tacky and that's that's a little bit funny like i like that it's charming so it depends which way you look at it if you like everything fresh and modern it's probably not the ship for you but if you don't mind you know the 20 year old decor and how that looks then uh, you'll be fine really it's a good choice for families on a budget who don't need all of the fancy things but they just want to get together and have a good time carnival sunshine is the oldest ship in the carnival fleet when she first launched she wasn't even called carnival sunshine she was called carnival destiny and this was all the way back in 1996 so that's like when the Spice Girls were around. <laughs> now, when she was renamed as Carnival Sunshine, she did undergo a massive upgrade and got lots of new features added. But cruisers have said that the ship is starting to show its age again and is in need of a little bit more TLC. So if you want a fun experience, um, that's good value for money, not too expensive, then yeah, this is not a bad ship to choose, but just bear in mind that it is the oldest ship in the fleet. Next up we've got Carnival Paradise which is the second oldest ship in the fleet and also the smallest. If you find the idea of some of the newer cruise ships that are absolutely massive to be a little bit intimidating then you might actually prefer one of the smaller ships like this one. There's not loads to do but it's still not a boring ship. You've still got loads of lovely places to relax, you've got swimming pools, You've got a choice of dining venues, the entertainment's not too bad. You've got mini golf, you've got water park, you know, there is enough to keep everyone happy. So it does feel a little bit basic according to some of the reviews, but then people have also said that the service is good, so I wouldn't rule this one out. Now we're up to number 20, so we're getting towards the worst carnival ships. If you've got a cruise booked and you've been listening out for your ship and you've not heard it yet, don't worry, like it'll be fine. Now, number 20, we've got Carnival Elation. Now, this ship isn't the oldest, it's the third oldest, but people say it feels like the oldest. And the reason for that is that it's not had the same $150 million revamp as Carnival Sunshine has. So people have said that the decor on this ship definitely feels dated. They've said that the ship feels small, and that the entertainment is a little limited as well. It's got a very different atmosphere than the loud, brash party ship. Well, maybe you'll like that. It's a little cheaper as well. So if you do want to take a carnival cruise that's not big and crowded and with too much going on, then maybe this one could be the one for you. Now we're into the bottom three, which means that these are the three worst ships, according to reviews. I'm not saying they're bad, I'm just saying that they got the worst reviews, and that's something that you might want to consider if you've not booked. Number 21 is Carnival Splendor. Carnival Splendor is a unique ship in the Carnival fleet because this ship was originally built for Costa Cruises and then was transferred over to Carnival before she was completed. The decor on this ship can only be described as bold. You might find it a bit too much, you might not, you might love it, you might hate it. Some people don't like it though. Is that going to detract from the quality of your cruise? I don't know. One good thing about this ship is that there is an absolutely massive spa and there's lots to do for kids as well. So if you fancy sending your kids to the kids club and spending the day soaking in the spa, that sounds like heaven. I, I might book this ship. But anyway, this ship's mostly about the destinations. It sails from Australia and goes around the South Pacific. So I'd imagine that you'd be spending most of your time having fun ashore rather than being on the ship anyway. Next up is Carnival Sunrise. Now this ship has got something of a reputation for being a party ship and not always in the best way. It's definitely never boring, 
Uh, but if you don't mind the volume and other cruisers having a good time and taking advantage of the drinks package, then yeah, it could be great. But you know, that's not for everyone. The sports deck's always lively. It's got a really good high ropes course. And there is also the serenity deck if you need a little bit of peace to escape the party atmosphere that seems to run through the rest of the ship. And bottom of this list, sadly, comes Carnival Radiance. Launched in the year 2000, Carnival Radiance was an ambitious ship. It's smaller than most other Carnival ships, but it does have a lot crammed into it. And I think this is where some of the problems come from. Cruisers say that this ship is very crowded, that they have to queue for things. And it's got some quirks as well, such as the spa rooms being located directly below the kids club that people aren't too keen on. Even though Carnival Radiance is the least popular ship, it still doesn't do too badly on reviews, getting an average of three out of five. So I think that just goes to show that no matter which Carnival ship you choose, it's not going to be bad. It's going to be at least three out of five on average. And a lot of the time when people leave negative reviews, it's possibly because they've just picked the wrong ship for them. If you love relaxation and chilling and then you book yourself onto a party ship, you're not going to have a good time. Likewise, if you go away to take advantage of the drinks package and stay up in the nightclub and whiz down water slides and then it's all a bit quiet, you're not going to have a good time either. So I think what I'm trying to say is, just research what kind of cruise you want, what kind of ship suits you, and then we'll all be happy. I hope you found this interesting. If you did, I've also done a similar breakdown of Royal Caribbean ships, and I've listed those by review. So if you want to check that video out, I'm going to leave a link to it just there. Have a look, and I'll see you in the next one.